Ohm testing. Volt voltage testing, we're testing the amount of pressure in a circuit. Um, we have high resistance, right, and we are able to test voltage on one side and another and compare those readings. Um, when it's in the amp setting, it has no resistance and it's really just a fancy electron counter. Well, when we're in the ohm setting, you're actually turning the, matter, uh, the, the meter into a battery or utilizing its power source uh, or utilizing it as a power source. Now, for that reason, we don't hook up the meter in series or parallel because we need to hook up the meter when there's no power to the load at all. It actually needs to be completely disconnected as preferred if the component is actually isolated from the circuit. At the very least, disconnect it from the battery. So if I was gonna hook up my meter to the circuit, I would have to completely disconnect my battery, pull the fuse to the circuit, disconnect a wire from somewhere, but I've, I've got to disconnect power to the switch. And the reason for that is because my meter now becomes the battery and I can't have two competing batteries against each other. I'm not gonna get a reading. So what I would have to do is I'd have to take the load out of the circuit if I didn't wanna disconnect all of these. Sometimes disconnecting the battery can be a really big pain in the butt for customers. If you don't have a, a battery saver, it, they'll lose all their radio stations. And, and in a lot of cases, they'll even lose, you know, pr preferred settings in the vehicle if it's a snazzy vehicle. So if you don't want to do that, just remove the load from either disconnect just the circuit or remove the load itself. And then I would hook my meter up um, power in and out. And I would, uh, what it essentially does is it is going to send a trickle of electron flow through. Not enough to actually necessarily make the light bulb light, um, but it's going to be enough to see what the resistance is. So whether that be a sensor or what, um, I would compare that to a specified value. Now, I will go ahead and show you guys on the board in a minute how you would do that and what a reading might look like but I think it's really important and I, I wanna make sure that I at least say this in one of these videos. Voltage testing is the preferred testing method. The reason why ohm meters suck and ammeters suck are because they are not giving you a full picture as to what's going on. Ohm meters particularly, um, we only do these tests when we have no other option. Um, maybe because the component as it's functioning is inside uh, deep in the engine bay and is just impossible to test while it's in the vehicle or moving. Another reason could be maybe like an ignition circuit. I don't want to test the secondary side of the ignition coil with my voltmeter while it's live. And that's, that's the good part about voltage testing, but it's also the bad part about voltage testing. It needs to be done or tested while everything is live. <laughs> and working. So with that being said, ohmmeters don't do that. Here's why that's not a great thing. Um, even though it's advantageous when I've got something that I can't really test dynamically, this bulb, that sensor, whatever, that thermistor, whatever it is that you're testing, does have a, a, a specified ohm range. However, the amount of resistance that it's going to have on the bench versus when it's working. They're two different things, but the problem is you'll never know what the resistance is when it's working because you can't test ohms, uh, four ohms while there's already current flow. And so there's the problem because we have temperature changes. And so if we are gonna have temperature changes, we're gonna have resistance changes. So I might ohm test something and it, it turns out fine. It's within spec, I don't get it. Um, if it's on the end of the specification, I would be careful, especially if it's on the high end of the specification, because um, as that component heats up, its resistance is gonna change, or as it cools down, its resistance is gonna change, which is why I prefer voltage testing. But I just wanted to go ahead and throw that in there. Um, but that's how we go ahead and do ohm tests on the board. Let's go ahead and do the ohm tests um, on the other board. All right, so let's go ahead and set our meter to ohms. Now we know that we're gonna have to go ahead and put our red lead in the ohm terminal. And I'm gonna need to set my meter to ohms. Oops, 
one too far. Notice right now it says m ohm because that is mega ohms. Now again, I can't just hook this up anywhere. Um, I have to separate the power, right? So not only do I need to turn it off, I need to really disconnect my, my component here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lose those wires. Now we're completely isolated. And we do know that the 1187 lamp ohm reading is gonna be different than the 1152. Well, let's see exactly how different. So again, we've got our meter all set up. Let's go ahead and hook our meter up. Notice the light bulb is not lighting. So it's not enough voltage to, but we've got 8.3 ohms. Let's let that cool down and see if it changes because we did have that on, it's not very warm. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. Uh, sorry, what did we say? Darn ADD, uh, 8.3 ohms. We do know if we're gonna guess that this one is gonna be more. So let's see, compared to 8.3 ohms, we're looking at 11.7, 11 11.8 ohms. So definitely a few ohms more worth of resistance, which we already knew because we calculated that out and in series circuits, we see that this one is brighter. So um, we, we already figured that out, but that's kind of cool to be able to see that on the meter in real life. Now we could ohm test our fuse, we could ohm test our switch. Um, there's lots of things that we could ohm test. Ohm tests suck because it's the equivalent of sending a motorcycle down the freeway because it's simply a trickle uh, to see if there's traffic, right? It's not very good way of testing because if there is any traffic, a motorcycle can simply split lanes, right? We're only sending out a little trickle, just like the motorcycle. Um, so ohm testing is not a very dynamic test. Um, that's why voltage testing works so much better. So um, if we had a restriction, this wouldn't really see it because it's really only sending a very small amount of current out. And if we had another meter, we could actually hook that up in series and see exactly how small um, that, that amount of amperage would be. But I don't have another meter on me. Um, but essentially, that's how we do an ohm test on, um, on really anything. So again, questions in the comments. Uh, let me know what you guys think and if there's anything that I need to clarify.